Imagine you're a participant in an experiment about learning. In the experiment you have a teacher role and you need to take a test from another random person. This person is the learner. The learner is sitting in another room and you can talk to him via a microphone and he can answer you with buttons that will turn on a light in your room. For the test the learner has to remember pairs of words. But each time he makes a mistake, you will have to administer an electric shock to him. And for each error, an additional 15 volts get added to the shock. You start at 15 volts and end at a whopping 450 volts. Note that although the shocks might be extremely painful, they will leave no permanent damage. Now the question is how far will you go? What is the largest shock that you would apply? And how far do you think that others will go? If you're like most other people you will probably say that you will stop at around 140 volts and you will also think that other people have less morale and that they will stop at 210 volts. The truth however is way more unsettling. When this experiment was conducted in 1963 with 40 people, every participant continued up to 300 volts and 65% of the participants reached the highest voltage level. I'll tell you more in a second but remember, if you want to see more videos like this one in the future, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell icon to become part of the Brain Applied family. In 1963, Stanley Milgram conducted an experiment to investigate how the horrors of the Holocaust could have occurred through the obedience of regular men to their terrible leaders. The procedure of the notorious Milgram experiment went as following. 40 men with different educational backgrounds and with ages between 20 and 50 were recruited through a newspaper advertisement to participate in an experiment about learning. For just showing up, the participants received four and a half dollars, no matter what the outcome of the experiment was. The experiment itself was held in the elegant interaction laboratories of the Yale University. At the start of the experiment, the participant was introduced to another participant, Mr. Wallace. Mr. Wallace, a likeable Irish-American individual, was in fact an actor who was cooperating with the experimenters. In the scientific world, they call such a person a confederate. Both participants drew a piece of paper on which their role was stated. Of course, the outcome was fixed, as both papers had the role of teacher written on it. Mr. Wallace ended up in the electric chair after being strapped in there with the help of the participant and the experimenter, who was another confederate with a lab coat. The unknowing participant was then put in another room in front of a shock generator with 30 levers, ranging from 15 to 450 volts, and related verbal warnings that ranged from slight shock to danger severe shock. The last two levers were only marked with the designation stating XXX. The participant was assured by the experimenter that no permanent damage could occur. He was even given a sample shock of 45 volts to convince him of the authenticity of the shock generator. In the task the participant read a series of word pairs for the learner. Then he read one of the previously mentioned words followed by four other words. The learner had to answer via a console with buttons which of the four words he thought had been matched with the first word. When the participant reached the bottom of his word list, he had to repeat the list all over again while remaining to increase the voltage level until the learner matched all pairs correctly. Whenever the participant switched the lever, to apply a shock, he saw a light flash and heard a buzzer and several relays click on his shock generator. 
our responses of the learner were standardized, which means he always gave the same answers. He gave about 3 wrong answers for every correct answer. The reactions of the learner to the different shocks were also standardized and were played from a tape recorder. Starting at 75 volts, the learner started to grunt. At 120 volts, he complained verbally. Oi mate, what the fuck you think you're doing? At 150 volts, he demanded to be released. And at 285 volts, his response can only be described as an agonized scream. After that, the learner refused to answer and eventually he became completely silent. The participant was instructed that not giving an answer is seen as giving the wrong answer. When the participant wanted to quit the experiment or started arguing about whether it was morally wrong, the experimenter used four sentences to motivate him to keep going on. The verbal prods were always given in this order. If the first one failed, the experimenter would try the second one. If that also failed, he tried the third one and so on. If the participant still wanted to quit after the sequence of prods, he was allowed to do so. The sequence was started over again for each shock. 26 of 40 participants administered the shocks all the way up to the end. Five of them quit the experiment right after the agonizing scream and all others were somewhere in between. Most of the participants showed signs of great distress such as out of plate nervous laughter, trembling, sweating and angered responses. Three subjects even suffered from uncontrollable seizures after which the experiment was cancelled. After the experiment, a few follow-up questions were asked and the participant got to meet Mr. Wallace to reassure the participant that no harm had been done and that he didn't have to feel bad. Milgram and his colleagues were astonished as no one had expected such results. Although the participants had been told from when they were young that it is wrong to hurt other people, they still followed the commands of someone with authority who has no powers to enforce his commands in any way. The second surprise was the amount of tension and emotional pressure the experiment puts on the participants. Initially it was expected that participants would stop after their conscience told them to do so, but they continued up to their mental breaking point. As an observer stated, I observed a mature and initially poised businessman enter the laboratory smiling and confident. Within 20 minutes he was reduced to a twitching, stuttering wreck, he was rapidly approaching a point of nervous collapse. He constantly pulled on his earlobe and twisted his hand. At one point he pushed his fist into his forehead and muttered, oh god, let's stop it. And yet. He continued to respond to every word of the experimenter and obeyed to the end. The ease with which people obey someone with authority is terrifying. One might wonder how authority can be abused in a complex society where there are many links in the chain of evil. Adolf Eichmann, one of the architects of the Holocaust, was sickened when he visited the concentration camps. But all this guy had to do was sit behind his desk and sign papers. While the guys in the camp, who were doing the actual murdering, could justify their behavior as they were just following orders from above. In the end, Milgram tried 24 different variations of the experiment with over a thousand people to study the factors that influenced the obedience of people. For example, changing the location from the prestigious Yale University to a worn off office reduced the percentage of people who gave the shocks all the way up to the end to just 47.5%. Milgram was heavily criticized for his experiments and the way they were conducted by the public, other scientists, as well as some of his students. He wrote a book, Obedience to Authority, about his findings and you might want to read it. In 2015, the movie The Experimenter by Michael Almereda was released. It tells about Milgram and his experiments. 
As philosopher Søren Kierkegaard said, Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. This is what we do at Brains Applied. So if you want to know more about famous psychology experiments in history, or just psychology in general, press the big sexy round subscribe button on the left. I also advise you to check out my previous videos, I give a 100% guarantee that you will like them. And I will see you in my next video.